Welcome to another reading from Miller's Church History by Andrew B Miller and being read by Brother Scott Messenger. So, let me flip this around and we will get started. <clears throat> Welcome everyone, let me get this uh, situated here for you. Alright, well, we are back for part three of chapter four. And we're going to attempt to finish this chapter tonight. So, I will be starting in page number 69 where I left off if you have a copy of the book, you're welcome to follow along. If not, um, you can just listen and go back later and get this in its entirety. And I encourage you to go and listen to all these uh, <clears throat> broadcasts, or if you have your own copy of the book and want to read it uh, for yourself. And so, praise the Lord. All right. As always, I would like to welcome you uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he is the only one that can save your soul, so hope you'll trust him this evening. Amen. All right, well, last time we left off with Thomas, and then I ran out of space on my phone and had to get rid of some uh, stuff and retransform to my uh, flash drive and all that good stuff, so we will be continuing on page 69 of the book, and the next person we'll be talking about is James, <clears throat> the son of Alpheus. The identification of James's, uh, the, of the Jameses, the Marys, and the Lord's brethren has been, uh, has long been a difficult point with critics. This would not be the place even to refer to their theories and arguments. But, after looking at different sides of the question, we still believe that our apostle is the James who was a principal man in the church at Jerusalem, who is the author of the general epistle of James, amen, who is also called the Lord's brother and surnamed the just and the less, probably because he was low in stature, identification of uh, identification of persons is extremely difficult in such histories from the habit uh, so common among the Jews of calling near relations brothers and sisters and from nearly all of them having two or more names. Right, so we know that uh, people can have two or more names in the Bible. <clears throat> They're the same person. Uh, so continue on here. In the four lists of the apostles, James holds the same place. Uh, he heads the third class. They appear to be in fours. Peter heads the first, Philip the second, and James the third. Very little is known of James until after the resurrection. From what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15.7, it is evident that the Lord before his ascension, honored James with a personal interview. So, 1 Corinthians 15, 7. And go read that on your own time. Uh, so again, and, uh, it says Paul. Uh, what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 7, it is evident that the Lord, before his ascension, honored James with a personal interview. This was before the day of Pentecost, and may have been for the special encouragement guidance and strengthening of the apostle we will now notice the principal passages from which we gain our knowledge of james in the first chapter of the acts we find him with the others waiting for the promise of the father the gift of the holy ghost after this we lose sight of him until he is visited by paul Galatians 1, 18 and 19, uh, which would be about the year A.D. 39. Now we find him equal with Peter as an apostle. He was at this time the overseer of the church at Jerusalem and on a level with the very chiefest apostles. The place he held in Peter's estimation appears from the fact that that when he was delivered from prison 
uh, he desires that information of his escape may be sent to James and to the brethren. So this is Peter uh, talking about his escape, that he desires uh, that information of his escape may be sent to James and to the brethren, Acts twelve seventeen. Uh, in A.D. 50, we find him in the Apostolic Council, uh, where he seems to deliver the judgment of the assembly. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Acts 15. None of the other uh, apostles speak in this manner. It would appear that he had risen Great, uh, risen greatly in apostolic position and authority. About the year 51, when Paul paid another visit to Jerusalem, he recognizes uh, James as one of the pillars of the church and places Cephas and John, Galatians 2, verse 9. Again, about the year 58, Paul paid a special visit to James in the presence of all the elders. And the day following, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. And that's uh, Acts twenty-one eighteen, the verse there. It is easily seen from these few notices that James was held in the very highest esteem by the other apostles, and that he filled a most important position in the church at Jerusalem. His attachment to Judaism was deep and earnest, and he, his advancement in Christianity appears to have been slow and gradual. He was a perfect contrast to Paul. Peter uh, forms a link between them. So Peter uh, forms a link between them. The martyrdom of James is placed at about 62, uh, close upon 30 years after Pentecost. The testimony of antiquity is universal as to his distinguished uh, piety and sanctity. Uh, his humi humility, too, appears great. Though he was the Lord's brother, or near relation, he styles himself the servant of Jesus Christ, and does not uh, so much as give himself the title of an apostle. For the reputation of his holy and righteous life, he was universally styled James the Just, and as he conformed to Jewish customs with a measure of regularity, uh, he was by no means so offensive in the eyes of his uh, unbelieving countrymen as the apostle of the Gentiles. But, uh, notwithstanding, the high opinion that was entertained of his character, his life was uh, prematurely ended by martyrdom. For an account of the life, character, and death of James, we are chiefly indebted to uh, Hegesippus, H-E-G-E-S-I-P-P-U-S, -E -E Hegesippus, uh, uh, Sipius a Christian of Jewish origin who lived in the middle of the second century. He is generally received as a credible historian. His nar uh, narrative of the martyrdom of James is given fully, and in his own words, in Smith's Dictionary of the Bible, we can only give it in substance. <clears throat> so, again, his narrative of the martyrdom of uh, James is given fully, and in his own words, in Smith's D uh, Dictionary of the Bible. And he says, uh, after that, we can only give it in substance. As many of the rulers and people of the Jews became believers in Jesus through the labors of James, the scribes and Pharisees were greatly stirred up against him. Uh, the whole of the people, they said, will believe in Christ, Therefore they came together to James, and said, We pray thee, stop the people, for they have gone astray after Jesus, as though he were the Christ. But he is the Christ, <laughs> uh, whether they wanted to believe it or not. <laughs> uh, so, hold on a second. 
seems my lighting seems to be a little off here. Apologize about that. Let me hit there. All right, well, do the best we can here. All right, so <clears throat> they didn't believe that uh, Jesus was uh, the Christ. And continue on here. It says, "We pray uh, thee to persecute all that come to the Passover concerning Jesus. Persuade the people not to go astray about Jesus, for the whole people and all." Of us give heed unto thee. Stand therefore on a pinnacle of the temple, that thou mayest be visible, and that thy words may be heard by all the people, for all the tribes and even the Gentiles have come together for the Passover. But in place of saying what he was told, he proclaimed with a loud voice in the ears of all the people that Jesus was the true Messiah. Hallelujah. He didn't uh, stand down. He stood up for the truth. That he firmly believed in him. That Jesus was now in heaven at God's right hand. And that he would come again in power and great glory. Many were convinced uh, through the preaching of James. And gave glory to God crying, Hosanna to the son of David. When the scribes and Pharisees heard this, they said to each other, We have done wrong in bringing forward such a witness to Jesus. Let us go up and throw him down, that the people may be terrified and not believe in him. And they cried out, saying, Even James the Just has gone astray, and they threw him down. But as he was not killed with the fall, they began to stone him. Then one, one of them, who was a fuller, uh, took a club with which he pressed the clothes and brought it down on the head of James. Thus the apostle died, and like the proto-martyr Stephen, uh, he died praying for them in a kneeling posture. It was almost immediately after that, or after this, that uh, Ves uh, Vespasian uh, commenced the siege of Jerusalem. And the Roman army turned the whole scene into desolation, blood, and ruin. So, <clears throat> that is James. Next we have Simon Zelotes, also called Simon the Canaanite. He seems to be a different person from Simon, the brother of James. We have no account of him uh, in the Gospel history. He is duly named in the Gospels and in the Acts and then disappears from the sacred page. It is generally supposed that, before he, uh, his call to be an apostle, he belonged to the sect among the Jews called the Zealots. Uh, they were cons uh, conspicuous for their fierce advocacy of the uh, Mosaic ritual. They looked upon themselves at the, as the successors of Phineas, who, in zeal for the honor of God, slew Zimri and uh, Cosby, Numbers chapter 25. And pretending to follow the zeal of the priest of old, they assumed to themselves uh, the right of putting to death a blasphemer, an adulterer, or any notorious offender without the ordinary uh, formalities of the law. They maintained that God had made an everlasting covenant with uh, Phineas huh, and with his seed after him because he was uh, zealous for the, his God and made an atonement for Israel. These uh, high-sounding claims and pretensions de uh, deceived both rulers and people for a time. Besides their fury and zeal for the law of Moses and for the deliverance of the people from the Roman yoke gave them favor in the eyes of all the nation. But, but, as most, or as must ever be the case under similar circumstances, their zeal soon degenerated into all manner of, uh, less, licentiousness and wild ex, uh, ex, extra, extra vagrant, vagrants, 
of, yeah, extra of vagueness. <clears throat> Not sure how you pronounce that, but, uh, all right, continuing on. Uh, excuse me. Uh, they became the uh, pests of every class of society. Under a pretended zeal for the honor of God, they charged whom they would with being guilty of blasphemy or of some grievous sin and immediately slew them and seized their property. Josephus tells us that they failed not to accuse some of the prime nobility, in quotation marks, and when they had succeeded in turning everything into confusion, uh, they, they meantime fished in the troubled waters. He bewails them as the great plagues of the nation. Attempts were made at uh, different times to suppress the society, but it does not appear that they were ever much reduced until, with the unbelieving nation, they were swept away in the fatal siege. Simon is frequently call, uh, styled Simon the Zealot, and is supposed to have belonged to this troublesome faction. There may have been uh, true and sincere men among them, but good and bad alike passed under the odious name of zealots. Uh, nothing is certainly known of the future labors of our apostle. <clears throat> Some say that after traveling for a while in the east, he turned to the west and penetrated as far as Britain, where he preached, uh, wrought miracles, endured many trials, and at last suffered martyrdom. So, that was uh, Simon Zelotes. Next we have uh, Judas. This is not uh, Judas Iscariot, this is another Judas, and he is the brother of James. This apostle is also called uh, Jude, Thaddeus, and uh, Libius, uh, L-E-B-B-E-U-S, Libius. I think that's how you pronounce it. But uh, we try our best to pronounce things around here. <clears throat> Amen. All right. These different names have different shades of meaning, but the examination of such uh, nuances uh, comes not within the range of our short papers. Uh, Judas was the son of Elpheus and one of our Lord's kindred, as we read it re read in Matthew thirteen fifty five, and says in Matthew thirteen fifty five, is not his mother called Mary and his brethren uh, James and uh, jo Joseph or uh, Joseph uh, uh, and uh, Simon and Judas? Uh, when or how he was called to the apostleship, we are not informed. And there is scarcely any mention of him in the New Testament, except in the different catalog, uh, catalogs of the Twelve Apostles. His name once occurs, uh, or, excuse me, his name only occurs once in the Gospel narrative, and that that is when he asked the following question, Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt uh, manifest thyself unto us, and not unto th un not unto the world? John fourteen twenty two. It is quite evident uh, from this question that he was still entertaining, uh, like his fellow disciples, the idea of a temporal kingdom or the manifestation of Christ's power on the earth, such as the world could perceive. But they understood not, listen closely, because a lot of people still don't think that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, and he didn't come down here to die for our sins, that they still think, uh, a lot of Jews and many people still think that he just came down here to be a prophet and didn't rise from the dead. But here we go. Um, let's see here. But they understood not yet the uh, dignity of their own Messiah. They were... Strangers to the greatness of his power, the glory of his person, and the spirituality of his kingdom. Uh, his subjects are delivered not only from this present evil world, 
but from the power of Satan and from the realm of death and the grave, uh, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians 4, uh, Colossians 4, Colossians 1, 13. Uh, the answer of Christ to the question of Judas is all important. He speaks of the blessings of obedient, uh, obedience. Yeah, uh, the true, the truly obedient disciple uh, shall surely know the sweetness of fellowship with the Father and the Son in the light and power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So uh, we know that you can't uh, be a believer unless you. Uh, You've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and then he gives you the Holy Ghost, and he comes and dwells inside of you forever and ever. Amen. All right, continuing on here. It is not here a question of the love of God and sovereign grace to a sinner, but of the Father's dealings with his children. Therefore, it is in the path of obedience that the manifestation of the Father's love and the love of Christ are found. And it says, see verses 23 through 26. And I believe that's, uh, I think that's, Cla is that John? Okay, let me find out here if we're in John. I don't think the Colossians has 23 verses. I think that's John. Well, I'm going to find out here really quick, so just bear with me. All right, let's see here. John 14, 22. All right, John fourteen twenty two. Uh, yep. So that was uh, verses twenty three to twenty six in John fourteen. Uh, so it says to see those verses. Well, let's go ahead and read them since I'm right here. All right. So uh, we read twenty two again. It says Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord. How is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us? and not unto the world. Uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. Uh, he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word uh, which ye hear uh, is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Uh, these things uh, have I spoken unto you, Excuse me, uh, being yet uh, present with you, but the Comforter, so the Comforter has not come yet, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, uh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So he's talking to the apostles and the disciples and uh, says that once the Comforter comes and they Believe on him, and he'll give him the comforter. Amen. So, uh, praise the Lord. Okay, so continuing on uh, with uh, Judas, the brother of James. It says here, as we move on, uh, but we must bear in mind when remarking uh, on the questions or sayings of the apostles that the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified as I was just speaking about. So he had not been glorified. Uh, the thoughts, feelings, and expectations of the apostles after that event were altogether changed. Hence, we find our apostle, like his brother James, styling himself Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. He neither calls himself an apostle nor the Lord's brother. Uh, this was true humility and founded on a true sense of the altered relations between them and the exalted Lord. On the day of Pentecost it was proclaimed, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Amen. Nothing is certainly known of the later history of our Apostle, some say that he first preached in Judea and Galilee, uh, then through Samaria into Idumea and to the cities of Arabia. But towards the end of his course, 
uh, Persia was the field of his labors and the scene of his martyrdom. From 1 Corinthians 9, 5, it may uh, be fairly inferred that he was one of the married apostles. Uh, have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Uh, there is a trans, uh, tradition about uh, two of his grandsons, which is both interesting and apparently true. Hmm. Alright, uh, so, continuing on here, it says, It has been uh, handed down by Eusebius uh, from he Hegesippius, uh, and a converted Jew, uh, Domitian, Dem uh, uh, the emperor, having heard that there were some of the line of David, of Christ still alive, moved with jealousy, ordered them to be seized and brought to Rome. Two grandsons of Jude were brought before him. They frankly confessed that they were of the line of David and uh, kindred of Christ. He asked them about their uh, possessions and estates. They told him uh, they had but a few acres of land out of the fruits of which they paid him tribute and maintained themselves. Their hands were examined and were found rough and callous with labor. He then inquired of them concerning the kingdom of Christ, and when and where it would come. To this they replied that it was a heavenly and spiritual, not a temporal kingdom, amen, and that it would not be manifested till the end of the world. The emperor, being satisfied that they were poor men and harmless, dismissed them unbound and ceased from his general persecution of the church. When they returned to uh, Palestine, they were uh, received by the church with great affection as being nearly uh, allied, allied uh, to the Lord, and as having nobly confessed his name, his kingdom, power, and glory. And finally, as we wrap up chapter 4, we have the final apostle, Matthias. And it says here of Matthias, the apostle elected to fill the place of the traitor Judas. That's Judas Iscariot, the one that portrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Uh, he was not an apostle uh, of the first election, uh, immediately called and chosen by the Lord himself. It is more than uh, probable that he was one of the 70 disciples and had been a constant attendant upon the Lord Jesus during the whole course of his ministry. This was a uh, necessary uh, qualification, as declared by Peter, of one who was to be a witness of the resurrection. So, uh, so far, as we know, the name Matthias occurs in no other place in the New Testament. According to some ancient traditions, he preached the gospel and suffered martyrdom in Ethiopia. Others believe that it was, uh, was rather in Cappadocia. Thus, the great founders of the church were allowed... <clears throat> excuse me, were allowed to pass away from earth to heaven without a reliable pen to chronicle their uh, labors, their last days, their last sayings, or even the resting place of the body. But all are uh, chronicled in heaven and will be held in everlasting remembrance. How marvelous are the ways of God, amen, and how unlike they are to the ways of men, Yes, uh, the manner of this apostle's election was by lot, an ancient Jewish custom. The lots were put into the urn, uh, Matthias' uh, name was drawn out, and thereby he was the divinely uh, chosen apostle. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barnabas, uh, Barsabas, uh, who was surnamed Justice, 
and Matthias. And they prayed, and said, Thou, Lord, which thou uh, knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two uh, thou hast chosen. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. The Solomon, or the solemn um, mode of casting lots was regarded as a way of referring uh, the decision to God. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole dis, uh, disposing thereof is of the Lord. And those references are, I just read, those scripture that I just read is Levi, uh, or Leviticus 16.8 and Proverbs 16.33. The apostles, it will... Uh, the apostles, it will be remembered, had not yet received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right, so it had not happened yet. The lot was never repeated after the day of Pentecost. That's right. So, this happened before the day of Pentecost, before they got the Holy Ghost and received it. And then uh, afterwards, that's when the Lord tells them to go out and preach the word to all the world. Amen. So, they couldn't... Uh, the Lord couldn't trust them to preach the word until after they had received the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. Well, that will wrap it up for chapter four. And uh, praise the Lord. We got through the whole entirety of it and did it in three parts. But it's been finished. And next time, Lord willing, we'll be covering chapter number five. And then we'll be back in with the Apostle Paul. Uh, will be our first uh, little uh, thing here. And then after that, uh, we'll be talking about his conversion and so on and so forth. So hope you'll stay tuned next time as we dive into Chapter 5 on the next broadcast. Let me see how long this is. Let's see if I have to do it in parts. Looks like it's going to be a long one. So let's well, maybe see here. Uh, da -da -da, da -da, we'll see how many pages it is, where it stops. Looks like this is going to be a long chapter, so we'll probably have to do it in a few parts here. Yep, so it goes from chapter, or page, uh, page 75 all the way to page 100, so... It's going to be another long one, so we might do it in parts. We'll see what happens. So until then, thank you for watching uh, these videos and this reading from Miller's Church History. And I'm sure you can find your own copy on the internet. Uh, this one comes from Bible Truth Publishers, and their address is 59 Industrial Road, P.O. Box uh, 649, Addison, Illinois. 60101 and then we have another address down here bibles and publications 5706 uh monkland montreal quebec h4a uh, ie6 so you can find it um from them or find a copy from some other uh publishing company or you can always go online and read it on the internet uh through some kind of internet website. They've got it online too to read. Uh, or maybe you can download a Bible app. Uh, I think it's on... Uh, um, oh man, I can't remember the name of that app. But uh, you can find it some way if you want to read it yourself. Amen. So again, thank you for watching these videos. And I encourage you to go back and listen to it from the beginning. And remember that uh, this is the history part of it. So... Not all of it might line up with the Bible, but uh, this is just all the history. And there's a uh, scripture given along with it, so you can look through the scripture and see the truth from God's word, along with the historical uh, aspect of it. Praise the Lord. And so we'll continue on, and this goes all the way. doesn't just talk about the apostles and the disciples, but it goes way past that and talks about other martyrs from... Uh, the heroes of the faith, uh, martyr, those that got martyred for uh, their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and spreading the gospel. Amen. So, if you have not put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, 
that is the thing you need to do today. As the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let me read this here really quick. Uh, so let me go here to chapter 15 and verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ, here we go, this is it, how Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but so, some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time, and so on and so forth. So, there you have it. That is the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection, and if you believe on Jesus and what he did on the cross for you, with your whole heart and soul, he will save you and give you eternal life. And there's no other way to have eternal life but through Jesus Christ alone. And many people are trusting in different things or trying to tack things on to Jesus. But Jesus said that it is finished on the cross. And there's nothing that you and I can do or add to that salvation. Because that salvation comes through Jesus Christ alone. Amen. So, as it says in John... Chapter 14, Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Not one of many ways, not one of many truths, not one of many lives, but the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. Amen. So, hope you'll trust him and he'll wash away all your sin. And just realize that uh, you're a sinner and we all come short of God's glory. And that is why we need a Savior. Amen. And that Savior is Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, that'll wrap it up for this evening. Until next time, when we start covering chapter number five. So, until then, may the Lord richly bless you, and you all have a great and wonderful rest of your evening. And if you know somebody that uh, doesn't have Facebook and would like to watch these videos, I also post them up on my YouTube page at uh, Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting. Or you can type in my name and look it up that way. Amen. And so hope you'll uh, share these videos with others. And it'll be a help and a blessing to you and many others that are watching this. Amen. All right. Well, Brother Scott signing off for now. So see you all later. Bye-bye. Till tomorrow.